it's that time of the month. No, not that time of the month, but the time for a collection update because I did pick up a lot more things than I expected in the last month. Obviously not as much as some other times, especially since the last one was right after a convention, but I did pick up a few things and then of course there were the Veneer Syndrome halfway through Black Friday sales, which you know your boy went bankrupt in. So yeah, those will be later because I still buy DVDs. I know, right? Cringe. Uh, I love people who are like, oh, I buy VHS. Oh, I buy like these older medias and they're like, I'm so quirky. Like, no, I just like to save money. And if, if something's on DVD and not on Blu-ray, what do you want me to do? Buy the VCD? Roger Corman's cult collection, cult collection, cult's classic line from Shout Factory. Uh, because, as you guys know, Roger Corman sadly passed away, we did a podcast, I reviewed Humanoids from the Deep, and uh, it's just been kind of like this, this Roger Corman mood that I've been in, and that was even before he passed away. I was starting to rewatch, you know, Death Race 2000s, Not of This Earth, the Humanoids from the Deep, like, I watched those, like, a couple of days before he passed away sadly but when he did pass away i was like damn i really don't have that many roger corman's cult classics dvds in my collection and a lot of them really interest me especially this one obviously lethal ladies 2. uh the main attraction in this is obviously the arena with pam greer but the two other films are kind of interesting uh, I watched Fly Me the other day, and it was pretty decent. I mean, this is directed by Santiago. Sergio S. Is it Sergio H. Santiago? Uh, he's a Filipino director who uh, kind of got to know Corman through uh, doing women in prison films, uh, especially the Jack Hill ones, which I did go see the big birdcage in the theaters, and that was amazing. And then after that, I watched The Big Doll House, which is not as good, because for some reason, even though I like the sleazier stuff, the, the Big Doll House is a bit too serious, unlike The Big Birdcage, which is, which is goofier, and I find that Jack Hill's style goes much better with The Big Doll House than The Big Bird, with The Big Birdcage than The Big Doll House. Anyways, this isn't a big dollhouse and big bird cage review, but yeah, Fly Me was fun. I haven't seen Cover Girl Models yet. Uh, I rewatched Roger Corman's documentary uh, that they did a couple years ago, I think 10 years ago, and uh, Joe Dante and that other guy, Alan Arkush, were talking about uh, editing the trailer for Cover Girl Models and how they would like come up with these weird, uh, absurd slogans, so I thought that was gonna be cool. Uh, Covergirl Models is also directed by Santiago, and of course the arena I bought because uh, Pam Greer and Margaret Markov, which uh, are two lovely ladies. And yeah, I don't think I'm gonna buy everything from the Roger Corman line, just because some of them don't really interest me, mainly like the, the Smokey and the Bandits kind of films. Uh, I, I watched Barbarian Queen this weekend, which was highly recommended to me by my friend Herschel, and we're definitely gonna do a podcast on Deathstalker 2 and Barbarian Queen, which is this one, he's gone in a like uh, sword and sorcery kick, and honestly, the way he's describing these films, I'm like, these sounds, they sound really fun, really sleazy, really trashy, but really fun, and I can confirm that Barbarian Queen is absolutely trashy and absolutely fun as hell. Yeah, it is. The movie is like, you're not even a minute and, and you get like nudity and non-consensual sex, which is, says a lot about these types of sword and sorcery movies. Uh, and apparently Deathstalker is not that much classier, so we're probably going to do Deathstalker 2 and Barbarian Queen. Because he told me, watch the first Deathstalker one, uh, the first Deathstalker movie, but like, they don't really... It, the second one is like this soft reboot of the original, so... Might as well start with what is, in Urschel's opinion, the better one, which is Death Soccer 2. And then you have the Warrior and the Sorceress, which, uh, the Sorceress, which I don't know, it's probably sleazy, it's probably trashy, I'm probably gonna like it too. Speaking of sleaze and trash, we got some Franco, because I thought to myself, damn, 
last month I didn't get any Jess Franco movies, so might as well compensate by buying three this month, and this is Linda. Not only did Jess Franco have a, a, a thing for titles that were basically the first name of a woman, Cecilia he also made, but he also really liked the name Linda, because uh, he made a movie, of course, uh, I have it right there, The Hot Nights of Linda, a couple of the characters in his films have the same names, so yeah, Linda. Uh, this is apparently a not super great quality, I don't know who put this out, these guys, but this looks like one of those like grey market bootleg company, and it's funny because I think they write something that it's, it's like remastered on there, and my friend Jacob Green, who's also a big Franco fan, told me that this looks absolutely like garbage. Uh, <laughs> Which, you know, when you're getting into the more obscure niche Franco titles, you don't expect the quality to be that great. Uh, this one's from the 70s, I think, or maybe the 80s. I don't know. It looks it looks fun. I don't know. It looks like a Franco movie. Uh, a lot of nudity and a lot of sexual intercourse. And it has a Playboy model, which I thought was funny. Ursula Bush Fellner. This for, if this is from the 70s, that name Bushfellner might be a bit too much on the nose there. Of course, this line, I am only missing a few of them to make Uncle Jess's face. So, hey, if you're out there, I'm just gonna throw that out there. If you have, I think I'm missing barbed wire dolls and voodoo passion. Because there were 10 of these, uh, these kind of full moon. Jess Franco slash Erwin C. Dietrich, C. Dietrich films that they released, who the spine would make uh, Jess Franco's face. Uh, I think there was there were ten, and I missing no, I'm missing three. Am I missing Voodoo Blue Rita, Voodoo Passion, Barbed Wire Dolls, and Blue Rita? But uh, Blue Rita and Barb um, and uh, Voodoo Passion have gotten Blu-rays but I really want to make Jess Franco's face. Anyways, this is number five in that line, right in the middle, as, as you can see, the eye of Daddy Franco, and it is Love Camp, which is, of course, a production by Erwin C. Dietrich, directed by Jess Franco, from the year 7077, which was a year that uh, Franco and D uh, Dietrich were working a lot. Uh, recently, I rewatched Jack the Ripper, which was awesome with Klaus Kinski. Uh, Love Camp is, of course, a woman in prison film, and it says Nazi exploitation on the back, but I think Full Moon is just a garbage company, and it's probably just a woman in prison film. I might be wrong, I haven't seen it yet. Now, from Sin Film Preservation, and I think this is out of print, uh, uh, I mean it was limited to 15 and I think it's already gone. I think my man sold the entire stock in like a day which was impressive. It's water power baby. The artwork is by Ivy, Ivy I know Ivy Romero the name but uh, her Instagram is ivy.here.uwu. I'll link it in the description. I'll link Sin Films too because you don't want to miss the next release. What is it? I forgot, but water power, you can't get anymore, I'm sorry people. Uh, the Jamie Gillis Enema adult film from the 80s, I think, no, from the 70s, based on a true crime case, and they made an adult film with uh, enemas, based on the, what was the name of the actual criminal, the Enema Bandit, that was uh, their, the, the, it's their nickname, which is a stupid sounding nickname for a man that, you know, was a terrible human being, the Enema Bandit. Anyways, yeah, Jamie Gillis, uh, this look at this artwork, it is a beautiful, obviously an homage to Maniac, uh, and yet we got Ivy's Instagram on the back. I can actually show the back, so thank you, Matt, for not just putting out porn on the back. I appreciate it. Uh, I will definitely, even though I don't want to, <laughs> because I don't like poo-poo in my adult material, but I will definitely eventually watch this and make a review video reaction on it. Uh, yeah, Jamie Gillis is a scumbag, but I'm pretty excited to watch this because I've heard only terrible things that will probably make me gag. So it's just gonna make for good content. 
not good for my mental health, but I've given that up a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba Moise. La Fire Octario, aka Savage Messiah, obviously named after the book, which is a book based on the Ant Hill Kids. What's fascinating about the Ant Hill Kids cult is that their entire thing, you know, happened like a couple hours from my house. I've actually been to the town where they started at multiple times and then when they moved into my province they were a bit farther but you know they did worse things uh so uh, yeah this is a french canadian film i think maybe a canadian slash just a canadian production but with a lot of french canadian actors uh the director is mario azopardi which doesn't sound very french canadian it's the story based on the book based uh about the <laughs> anthill kids uh, aka the savage messiah aka moise he called himself moise after the is moise is moses a prophet i don't know i haven't been to the fuck that church <laughs> speaking of church i got the blu-ray for what is probably, I still need to re-watch uh, in um, Violent Nature, but so far, and I doubt it'll change because this is my type of movie, this is probably my favorite movie of the year. It's Immaculate, of course, with Sydney Sweeney, star um, directed by Michael Mohan. Uh, yeah, this movie I re-watched yesterday because I watched this in the theater, of course, and absolutely loved it. But the sound was off in the theater, like it was really low. So I watched this yesterday on my TV and I loved it even more. I think it gets better on the second watch and I think it will get better on the third watch because I think it's a movie that has a lot in it. There were a few things that I didn't see the first time that it was like, damn, how did I miss that? But yeah, this movie is insanely amazing. And I also just love this, you know, simplistic, representation of the film on this slipcover. I mean, it's like a mainstream, big company elevation picture Blu-ray. So like, it's not gonna be a boutique label thingy, but I just love this, 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 this poster. And I think even though this movie would probably uh, benefit from an amazing, like throwback to 70s Giallo poster, I feel like the simplistic, just her on the cover is also a perfect depiction of this film. Uh, it's a slow burn, it's not a like boom 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 exploitation film, it is this very well put together, very uh, well crafted uh, masterpiece, I'll say it, it's a modern masterpiece. I know masterpieces need time to age, but uh, no, fuck you, this is a masterpiece, I love this film. It's, it's, cool. it's, it's amazing, it's just great, and uh, I think the only movie this year that can genuinely compete with this is... Uh, in a violent nature, which I hope gets a physical media. It's like a co-production with Shudder. I really want to rewatch it before the year's end for my like my video on the year. But man, it's like a Shudder exclusive, and I don't know. Usually they put out their stuff on physical, but now they got a deal with Vinegar Syndrome, which they only release like one title per month. I want in a violent nature in an easy, accessible Blu-ray because that movie was also awesome, but maybe not as awesome as Immaculate. I love Immaculate. Yeah, go watch it. Go watch it. It'll probably stream eventually. Don't worry, people. We're getting to Vinegar Syndrome. Uh, but before, we got another boutique label. This is Severin Bitches with Sex is Crazy by Jess Franco, of course, starring Lina Romay, because <laughs> obviously this is an 80s uh, Franco film. And what I really find fascinating, I haven't watched it yet, but pretty sure I will, I, I will watch it fairly soon. And I'll probably love it. I am biased, but hey, from what I've heard, this is a meta sex comedy, basically about Jess Franco as a director. So you have Alina Romay, who plays this, uh, this adult film actress, which she did do in real life as Lulu Lavergne. And uh, you just follow her on a set of a, 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 an adult film shoot, and then it turns very absurd, really quick, meta humor, and uh, experimental and just all out weird, which I do love when Jess, when Jess Franco gets weird. What did I watch recently? Macumba Sexual, which was so bizarre, so visually intriguing. 
nonsensical absolutely but so visually striking that I, I i loved it so if you're telling me that jess did a meta comedy around the same era that he did like his weirder experimental films like i'm down for that and uh yeah i'm not gonna show the back because this is this is explicit but there is a man in a demon mask which looks pretty bonkers uh, yeah so uh yeah sex is crazy with uh lina Rome. now we're getting to the things you're probably here for you're probably like show us the slip covers spooky got bad news for you i i, I didn't get any slip covers for these <laughs> Because they were on sale and much cheaper if I didn't get the slip covers for them. Had on they sleep, the Brian Paulin to expand my Brian Paulin con collection. This was, for me, this was the cheapest. Well, not the cheapest because I got two of his movies for free through the Second Cinema Boys shout out. But this was the most accessible Brian Paulin film that I could get. And this is, I think, one of his first one. This was from the 90s. It is shot on video, but it like later video i think this was like mini dv era because it looks like way better than the vhs camera and uh yeah it's a vampire flick slash action flick slash indie action film from the 90s and it's bonkers i need to rewatch it because i watched it this weekend and i was intoxicated as hall as all hell uh, but I really like the gore, obviously. The action scenes were really, really, really good. Very ambitious for a movie that probably had, like, no money. Uh, possibly a future video review. Ah, uh, Villages. Villages of the Damned. Three Spanish horror films I love. I love my Spanish horror. You guys know me. I'm a sucker for Euro exploitation, Euro horror, and especially... Italian and Spanish films from the 70s and 80s, 60s even, 90s, they kind of were inst in extinct, instinct, extinct, uh, but yeah, Village of the Dam, it's three films, uh, I can't read them because of the lights, uh, but I will, it's El Bosque de, la, de Lobo, if my Spanish speaking friends can rate my pronunciations, and my, I'm, I'm losing light, uh, eh, las, I can't read, I just blinded myself. Las Flores del Vicio, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. Oh, they had an English title for the first one. The Forest of the Wolf, and the last one, Beatriz. Uh, yeah, three Spanish horror films ranging from 1970, 1975, and the last one, 76. So, my favorite era of cinema and uh, from one of my favorite countries for horror films and just exploitation films. So I, I will probably enjoy all of these. From director Robin Galliano, Galliano Jr., which I think he's Mexican. Uh, I haven't wa I listened to the Second Summer podcast about him in a while, so I think he's Mexican. I've gotten a movie from him before, Cemetery of Terror, so you can see that these these covers are very similar, which kind of confused me as to which did I own. But good thing I was in this room when I bought them. But yeah, uh, Cemetery of Terror, I did rewatch recently. I love it. It's really fun. I just don't love it as much as other people. I just really, I'd say I like it. I like it. It's fun. Uh, but Grave Robbers is the one that everybody adores. It is from 1989. And uh, yeah. Robin Galliano Jr. Just what I like about his films, or at least the one, the one I've seen. Cemetery of Terror is this Halloween ripoff, but with Lucio Fulci, gore and nightmare logic. So wonderful. But I've heard that this is pretty similar to like a a slasher, but in the style of Galliano Jr. So, uh, gruesome death scenes and a relentless killer akin to his many American counterparts. So, 80s slasher, hell yeah. We got Hong Kong movies, and I love, I'm, you know, you know, guys, I got a softness for 90s Hong Kong films. Other 90s horror movies from other countries? Nah, get that out of here, other than Japan but also Hong Kong. So this is Bio Zombie. I just love this cover. This is the alternate cover. Uh, I didn't show 
all the in the inver uh, alternate cover but this comes with a little booklet which is not something that's common in all veneer syndrome releases uh and uh yeah i don't know i haven't watched this uh i just kind of blind bought it because i love 90s hong kong films uh especially of this kind you know especially this like goofy wacky looking so uh but yeah i'm, I'm sure i'm gonna like this one and finally for this video is it me or was this video complete garbage? Anyways, Infernal Rapist. <laughs> what a way to end. Uh, one that I watched uh, in the room uh, at FrankenCon with the boys and I absolutely adored. I rewatched it with a friend. I was sober and it was still amazing, but not as amazing. I feel like the seriousness in some of the f scenes were um, kind of lost to alcohol and then i watch it sober i'm like man this movie's really fucked up <laughs> but it's still really silly too so it's this kind of in this weird limbo of very sleazy disgusting filth and also very sleazy disgusting filth but funny uh so yeah there is a scene in this that is mind-alteringly weird and uh, yeah i do still recommend this film i do I did really like it uh, on a second watch, and I will probably watch it multiple, multiple times. This is... Uh, I don't really believe in guilty pleasures, but the content of this film do make me feel guilty, but I'm still getting pleasure... That sounded way worse. Anyways, I'm gonna shut this off before it gets too crazy. I'm gonna shoot the thumbnail. Uh, uh? I'm Tim Allen in world famous TV show Home Improvement. Oh? Uh? Oh? Uh? I'm autistic.